Hey, welcome. So we've got 10 things I wish that I knew when I was going through my spiritual awakening. And oh my gosh, there are so many and I can't wait to get to them with you. But absolutely number one is how to ground my energy. If you walk away from nothing else in this video, grounding work is number one. And it's as simple as chop wood, carry water mentality. That's my biggest takeaway from this video for you, if nothing else, is learning how to ground your energy. So much of our spiritual awakening is the Bakwe, the soul star, the 12th, you know, chakra, connection with source, connection with, I call it celestium, connection with God, connection with spirit. And it is all this very high vibrational work well, we have the ability to get completely lost and what I want to say very gently is out of our minds, which as a, as a, as a spiritually gifted person or someone who was waking up to my spiritual gifts, what's really important to allow those ascensions to happen and to allow our spiritual awakening to happen with a bit more ease it is so important to be grounded to the earth to be grounded in things that are real to be grounded into our bodies to be grounded into you know our space on earth and so when I say chop wood, carry water, I literally mean mindful activities. So as you are doing, washing the dishes, you're washing the dishes, you're all in on this dishes. You know, as you're cleaning your home, you're all in, you're fully cleaning that toilet bowl with all the love you can muster. You know, you're not off with your head in the clouds all the time. You are fully present in what you're doing. Meditation practice where you are breathing practicing breath work, practicing stilling the mind, taking every thought captive. Grounding work is my number one thing that I wish I knew when I was having spiritual awakening for the first time. I knew it during my second, you know, big prompt. Uh, but during the first one, I didn't and I wish I did. Thankfully, I had a life that was cultivated in a lot of mindfulness because I I had a farm and so animals and chores and children and gardens keep you really grounded. You're in the dirt a lot, which helps. Um, I'm, I, I worked with the earth a lot, so that was a natural help. But the number one takeaway from this video is grounding work. So movement practice, breath practice, being on the earth and being very mindful as you move through your day, as mindful as possible. Okay, next to number two. I'm gonna say that for me, it was that past pain and traumas that I hadn't really dealt with properly were coming back up in my life as I was spiritually awakening. Like all of the crud that I hadn't dealt with, that I had shoved into my body at some point in my life was resurfacing. Like I was really having to look at all the spaces and places in my life that I had neglected or that I at the time either didn't know how to deal with it properly or I just chose not to. And that stuff started resurfacing, which can feel very upsetting. It can feel like you're experiencing the traumas all over again. And I want to encourage you, if you are experiencing that, it's okay. That is completely normal as you awaken, as you start your spiritual awakening. So normal, but it can be quite distressing because you're like, gosh, I thought I dealt with this. And you realize that you had to go deeper, that there was something more that you needed to look at. And this, you know, time in your life is giving you the opportunity to do that because truly the reason why is because your body and your heart 
and your spirit are asking for for more healing they're asking you to go deeper and that is such a huge part of awakening is that we're asked to look at all of the ways in which we've bypassed you know that's a that's a really popular term and I didn't really know what it meant and I think this is the first time I'm using it um, that's what it means if you bypass something you skipped out on the work something that I wish I knew is that because you're starting to change because you're starting to wake up to new realities because you're starting to look at the world in a different way you may find on your spiritual awakening is that you start to feel more distance between relationships whether that be friendships or work friends acquaintances in your life your partner your family like I want to say and in encouragement and love that possibly all of those relationships may feel a little different for a time it might not stay that way once you kind of figure out what your path is where you're headed what you're up to but that could take time that could take months to years like you are awakening your path is widening you're making different choices possibly than you've ever made in this lifetime and with that comes consequences and I don't mean for that to sound harsh but what I mean by that is that that's okay this is part of your journey and in your spiritual journey not everybody can go with you and I want you to know that that's okay sweetie that is okay if not everyone can go with you because you're gonna meet other people that will boost you on your journey and they're gonna become precious to you and so in encouragement and love I say if you are having struggles with any of your relationships it's totally normal and go gentle go gentle go easy um, you know you don't have to blow your life up but just observe what's changing in your relationships and just know that that's okay it's totally normal and there's nothing wrong with you like that's the biggest thing over and over I want to say there's nothing wrong with you you're okay you're doing it you're you're waking up your life is your life is widening you're you're starting to look around and like oh my gosh I, I never saw life from this perspective before I didn't know that that it could be like this and in that you may start to feel like there's separation between you and people that you've always been close to and it's totally normal okay so on my list of awakening I would say that your life might start to feel messy things that you've always been okay with may start to not feel okay because that's one of the things about if you think about it you're waking up right like waking up means it's as if you've been in a dream and now you're not and you're seeing things through new eyes and with that beautiful ability and with that vision well things that you always thought were okay may not feel okay things that you always thought were well this is just the way it is may feel like this isn't just the way it is and this isn't how I want it to be and that can look um, it can look that way in so many aspects of your life whether it be your job or your family or you know ooh, relationships or even things like the way you take care of yourself or the way you choose to heal yourself or the food that you ate everything may feel a little bit undone or a bit messy or like everything is on shaky ground and I want to encourage you that it's okay that is part of it when we change up our life you know there's a shifting and movement and it does feel messy but it doesn't mean it will always stay that way I want to encourage you I promise it doesn't always stay that way okay next one is trying new things um, 
and what I have, I have some notes written down. So what I have written down is you may have grown up in a religion or you grew up with no religion and now you're wanting to try it. Like that's part of your spiritual path, either starting to let go and loosen your religious beliefs or you are choosing to, you know, move into a religion and you are starting to change your life because of that. That is very common on a spiritual journey. I know for myself, uh, I grew up Christian, going to Christian churches, you know, very, very involved in the Christian church. And, um, you know, I started studying Buddhism and Taoism and Taoist beliefs and Chinese energetic medicine. And I mean, the looks that I got from my friends and family <laughs> when I told them things that I was starting trying out and looking into and in ways that I wanted to heal. They just looked at me sometimes like I was completely insane or that I had two heads or they were just like, that sounds really weird. And I'd be like, yeah, I know. Like, you know, I might get kind of weird. Like I might be doing weird stuff now. I don't know. And I would kind of joke like, it's probably going to get kind of weird around here. And, uh, just to kind of try to make light of the fact that I was changing um, and that's part of it try new stuff try new stuff anyway if you don't have the ability to do it in front of people per se like telling your friends and family about it do it privately do it quietly study on your own you know go to temples or go to services or go to schooling and you don't have to share it with everyone right away. You don't have to share anything until you feel comfortable with it. That's the beauty of it. It's your spiritual journey. It's not theirs. So it's okay to keep it quiet. Um, next one, you don't have to be good at anything. You might choose to be in a lot of quiet. Okay, this is really good. Um, I think so many times when we think that we're going through a spiritual journey, we might have the misconception or the belief that we have to be good at something or we have to know what our gifts are or we have to like not be a mess and start a business or you know like there's all this pressure on spiritual awakening and spiritual journeys and I would love to be that voice for you that says no babe you don't like you can just spend a lot of time in quiet. You can just spend a lot of time trying to figure out what is going on. Like, why am I getting these prompts, you know, to pray all the time? Or why do I feel like I can't do enough meditation to save my life? Or why do I feel like a train hit me and I can't do anything? Like, that's okay. A lot of time in quiet, a lot of time in solace, just trying to be with yourself and figure things out. I wish that I, <clears throat> pardon me. I wish that I had known that, like that that was kind of part of a spiritual awakening so that I didn't feel like I was doing something wrong or that I was feeling like I was being lazy. Like you're not being lazy. Your body's transforming. Sometimes you're transforming so much on the inside. Your, your cells are awakening. Your DNA is changing. You know, you're having ascension symptoms, which I'll do a video on. Um, it's too much for this one, but you know, you're having so many symptoms that you don't have to be doing anything for you to be having a spiritual awakening. Uh, I think that's a really important point to offer that it would have, I would have really appreciated hearing that as I was going through mine. Next one I have written down is be real and authentic. Um, and that one is such a big subject that, oh, that sounds so easy. Just be real and authentic and, you know, your life will be wonderful going through your spiritual awakening. Okay, what I guess would be better to say in this moment is that be honest about what you're going through with someone in your life. Whether it be someone that you know personally, a new friend, someone through online community, a life coach, uh, 
someone let someone know what you're going through your best friend your spouse you know your boyfriend or girlfriend um, find someone in your life who you can talk to them about what's happening because some of the experiences that you may be having may be really really intense and it really helps to talk to somebody about it and what I want to say is especially talking to someone who listens with a loving ear and isn't listening in judgment because honestly that is the last thing that you need when you're going through a spiritual awakening is someone who looks at you like what like well that sounds really weird like that's literally the freaking last thing that you need and I can't tell you how many times that happened to me as I was going through spiritual awakening after spiritual awakening and you know what I'm really just over that I'm over people who treat me like that and I'm over other people being treated that way so I really want to encourage you to find your tribe uh, if you're here with me on where you got a garden welcome to your tribe dear one um, you're in a safe space and you're in really good company so all is welcome here um, okay so next one on the list is uh, oh <laughs> how perfect it's find your tribe so I think we just covered it um, and what I want to say even a little bit more than that is as you start to possibly feel like you're losing some friendships or you're losing some acquaintances know that that is a very very natural part of spiritual awakening of ascension of kundalini awakening your friend group may thin out a bit your family may not totally understand what's going on even if they support you sometimes your family won't support you and that's tough too um, finding your tribe to me is one of the pillars of health as you go through your spiritual awakening I wish I had known that so what I want to say over and over again is find your tribe I'm your tribe where your goddess garden is your tribe um, and there are so many others um, online that you can reach out to and become a part of I'm so grateful for that because feeling like you're not alone is really really important through this because it can be really heavy you know um, having spiritual gifts come online having mystical experiences that are hard to explain it's so nice to have people who want to hear about all that stuff too like they're totally like oh have I got a story for you oh my gosh yes listen to this you know like it's so so fun and it's so encouraging to feel like you're not alone okay I think I have two more so next one is tough days will pass and this one really gets into like ascension symptoms which I'm gonna do another video on but tough days will pass like if you're having a day where you're flat like you're flattened you've got nothing to give you you can just barely make it through the day babe just make it through the day that is okay one foot in front of the other tomorrow's a new day you may feel totally different tomorrow don't sacrifice things now because you're having a rough day in your spiritual journey or in your spiritual walk or in your ascension it's okay to have some really tough days to have some off days to experience suppression of emotions to experience symptoms of depression to experience apathy to experience extreme fatigue that is so normal it is so normal to feel like you got run over by a Mack truck and a lot of that is because you're not just changing your mind your cells are changing your DNA is changing your RNA is changing like our bodies going through so many upgrades as we awaken you know your your crystalline DNA may be coming on board and that takes a tremendous amount of physical energy to change um, and I'll give more information on that in future videos um, I know I just kind of threw that in there it's a lot um, so tough days will pass it will not always be that way I promise you I promise um, I've had so many tough days <laughs> where I'm just like oh and that's another thing like when you're having the tough day on us on your in your life like 
don't judge yourself. Do not sit there and say, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be spiritual. I shouldn't be feeling depressed. Or, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be spiritual. Why do I always feel so shitty? No. Do not judge yourself. Let that go. Let it go, beloved. Let it go. Because that shame, that's just ego. Like, there's nothing there for you. It's okay if you're having a tough time. That's part of being real. Part of being authentic is saying, this is what I'm going through. It's really tough and I, I feel like I've got nothing to give. That's when you come and receive. You know, that's when you go and receive from your friend group, from your tribe. Like, that's where they encourage you. And that's why it's so important to have that. And my last one for today, I think this is 10. I don't know. I kind of lost count. My last one for you is listen to the voice and the um, prompts from God. So God, Spirit, whatever name you like to use, that's another thing. Don't get caught up on names or, you know, whatever name you love is the one you love. I often say God or Spirit. Listen to the prompts and trust your intuition because nine times out of ten, your intuition is God talking. Um, it is your spirit guides talking and until you learn until you hone into that frequency and that vibration and you really know what that's all about trust the prompts trust your intuition trust what you're being shown there is a reason um, and that's one thing that's so beautiful about this journey is that as you become receiving more gifts and you learn to trust yourself more and more that's where those gifts really come into play. Like understanding, like when I was understanding that I'm a medium and that I can talk to spirits from the other side and help family members here, you know, like I could have blown that off a hundred times as like, oh, I'm just making stuff up in my head. Oh, that's not really what it is. Oh, but that really is what it is. And when I started to believe it and not push it aside, the gift got more clear, right? Like the channel got more clear and my gift got more in tune and it got stronger. And then when I started to really build strength in that and it really got attuned, then I started being able to talk to the Arcturian Council. And it's like, I can see like now that I've been able to speak to the Arcturian Council and that is getting more fine tuned and that vibration, I, I can really feel it out. I've noticed lately like something for me in a spiritual awakening like the Palladian Council wants to come through and I haven't yet spent time with them but I know that that's next like okay so the councils are coming through like it's a constant journey like and listening to the prompts is such a big deal such a big deal in listening to the prompts um, and uh, once you learn that the prompts are a gift and the prompts are truly magic, you'll be excited every time you get one because you're like, oh my gosh, that really scares me. But Spirit's saying this is the next step. And then you start obeying. And, and that's where you step into ease and flow. Ease and flow in your life. And that's where magic happens. And it is so beautiful and something that I really want to encourage you with. Um, this has been so much fun. Uh, so what I wish I knew on my spiritual awakening, these are my top 10. I think there might be more than 10, but I can't wait for uh, to hear from you, what you thought, where you're at in your spiritual journey. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, let me know in the comments when you subscribe so I can personally welcome you. Like the video so others of us who are struggling or going through awakening symptoms see this um and uh thanks for being here until next time so love to you should have told you that you're beautiful